Mr. Henry O'Farrell was born on December 15, 1937 in Altoona, Pennsylvania. He attended Altoona High School and eventually went to college after graduating high school at the age of 16. During high school, O'Farrell was very active. He participated in baseball, basketball, and football. At the age of 17, O'Farrell made the decision to enlist in the military. He joined to bring money home to his mother and brother after the passing of his father. Railroads were shut down in Pennsylvania, so the military was Rofero's best shot at making money other than his previous experience at the Pennsylvania Shoe Company. Throughout Rofero's military career, he was first in the Marine Corps, then the Air Force, and lastly the Army. He enlisted in these branches to continue out his 20 years in the military, and then he got married. In the early days of basic training, Rofero went through many rough patches while training for the Marine Corps on Paris Island. When Rofero joined the Air Force, he stayed at Cali Air Force Base to receive his Air Force basic training. When he enlisted into the Army, he had all the training he needed to directly become an officer. Although Rofero was an active child and teenager, physical fitness was harsh during basic training. Basketball, football, and uh, baseball, that's about... Uh, Not that's all basic training was based on fitness. Some relied on mental stability in order to get through basic training. It was physically and mentally challenging during basic and specialized training. Mr. O'Farrell had specialized training in satellite communications. He received training from places such as NASA and other space stations. Although he specialized in cryptography and telecommunications, he became proficient while using small arms, whether they were rifles or pistols. Telecommunications was very important to the military when Henry Rofero was serving since he did not have the same technology as today. Rofero's main purpose was to make messages unintelligible to the enemy. He used cryptographic machines whenever working, which was several hours a day. Cryptography was not easy since he and others had to change the codes every 24 hours in order to keep everything classified and safe. Other communications Rofero dealt with were revolved around satellite communications, which he dealt with later in his career. While Rofero was in the military, he made strong bonds with new friends. He met many interesting people in the military from all around the world. This allowed him to learn about culture and other backgrounds. Many other people were in the same situation as he was, which gave Mr. O'Farrell a sense of belonging while in the military, knowing he was not alone throughout his struggle. He met some of his closest friends from Ireland, Mexico, England, and Puerto Rico. Rofero was with them, as most of them became citizens of the United States. Today, Rofero no longer contacts them, although he has the capability since some work at the Pentagon and NSA. Towards the end of Mr. Rofero's career in the military, he was a part of the Cuban Missile Crisis, which was an extensive mission. He stated the Cuban Missile Crisis it was quite extensive. At the time, I was stationed at San Antonio, Texas, Cali Air Force Base Security Service at the time, and there was always that threat of being bombarded from Cuba because the Russians were there with their missiles. And we had a day to day, every day we had some crisis going on. Ships coming close to Miami and we had to chase them back. Also the Russians would come into Cuba and have their missiles pointing at us. So we had to monitor them constantly and we had a large force, US force in Miami, off the coast of Miami, keeping an eye on them also. There was always a threat that the Russians would attack them, so they were constantly monitored by the U.S. President John F. Kennedy at the time, was pressing the Russians to get out of Cuba. Rofero was a big part of the Cuban Missile Crisis because he was a cryptographic expert and they figured out that Oswald assassinated Kennedy. Cryptography was important to the crisis because they closely monitored the Cubans and Russians. This was not the only extensive mission that Mr. Rofero dealt with during his military career. Rofero was stationed in the Arctic Circle, which made communication with his friends and family back home nearly impossible. Rofero was unaware of where he was stationed while he was there for confidentiality and security reasons. Rofero's only way to communicate with his family was by letter, and strictly only letter. My family to be for one whole year, and uh, they wouldn't tell me, the military wouldn't tell me where I was going to be stationed. My family was not uh, allowed to come with me and then not even know where I was and it was a classified uh, assignment and uh, it was up in the uh, Bering Straits in the Arctic Circle and uh, 
we were to com communicate uh, and uh, monitor uh, any activity either coming out of us uh, Siberia or Russia or even Red China at the time we were stationed underground. I stayed underground for one whole year, didn't, didn't see daylight. While he was in the Arctic Circle, his wife was raising their first child, which she had to raise on her own for 12 months. Their duty was all underground, but the few times Rafael left the site to go outside, it was extremely harsh and the climate was unbearable, but he was recognized for these treacherous duties. Chief Warrant Officer Henry Rafael has received many awards and ribbons during his military career. He has earned the Cold War ribbon, which was given to any Cold War veterans for their honorable service during that war, and a congratulations letter by President Ford. Rofero has also received an NSA recognition letter for his 35 years of military service. All of his achievement letters, awards, and ribbons were not easy to procure because he had to go through hard work to achieve this recognition. Mr. Rofero described his military lifestyle as very challenging. He had physical and mental struggles, but overall, his hardest struggle was when he had to be away from his family. Uh, other than uh, the tragedy as far as getting injured, uh, I got injured a couple of times uh, with my back, and uh, being in the airborne, it didn't help matters, but uh, I got uh, taken care of in the military with medical assistance. He had to go fight for his country and leave his family behind, but he did this to help them. Now, Henry Rivera had a long career in the military, and he thought it was a good experience and taught him many life lessons, but he's glad to be home. Although he learned a lot during his career, he would not redo his whole experience again. You know, I figured that I uh, got uh, a lot of experience, a lot of training, and my education in the military, which I wouldn't have uh, gotten otherwise. And uh, I really appreciate uh, my country uh, accepting my uh, active duty. Although he would not miss his military duty, he is still honored as an American hero.